Retirement is an extremely hard thing. Any Anytime you do, and you guys have all retired too, by the way. Let me put it in these terms. Remember how, remember high school? Remember how fun high school was? And for some of us, how tough high school was, whether it's the academics or the social side. Or, but remember those memories? And when that got through, even though that was only a four-year period, when that got through, there was a moment where you wake up and go, what do I do now? I'm used to getting up every day at six o'clock and being out of the shower and being dressed and starting my breakfast by 6.30. And I'm used to, you know, I leave the house at this time to be on the school bus or get myself. Remember how you had those first period was here and second period was here and do that a few times and you take a lunch break and you go back, you do a few more and you go home. That structure was a real thing though. And that, that was just all that you knew. So you do have this, this real, well, what do I do now? And then you have to answer the question. Maybe you go into the military, maybe you go into the job force, maybe you go off to college, but those are still capped as well. When you come through that, you have another day of reckoning. What do I do now? This was life as I knew it. So there's many things that you could retire from, but the, the point is when you're doing something, you're dedicated and you're committed to it, and that's just, that's just what you do, and that's who you are to some level, it can be really tough. And... I'm not, I'm not totally sure as to what BJ Penn is going through. I just know what I read. And I've reached out to BJ a number of times over the years. He's never gotten back to me. I've gone to his brothers. I've, got, I've done everything that I can do to get a hold. And I've known BJ 20 years. I, it's very hard to get a dialogue with him. I see him in person. It's like world friends. We never lost a beat. But he's hard to reach. He's hard to reach on the phone. So now I have to observe and trust things that are true that other people are telling me are true because I can't get a hold of the guy himself. Okay, fine. Very common. But that's my situation with BJ. What we're being told is that BJ went right to Dana White himself and said, look, I'm having a couple of obstacles by having free time. I'm finding myself in more trouble than I would like to. But one thing that's very good for me is to have a goal, to go to the gym, and to go home tired. It just it just puts me as a human being in a better place. Could you please give me one more fight? Now, Dana said yes. On a human level, Dana said yes. What has ended up happening, at least what my fear is, is that we aren't we aren't working to solve a problem over there at Team BJ. We're just kicking the can. Retirement and being done with something, it's very real and you're going to face it and it's not going to be great. If you're BJ, it's probably going to be a lot greater because you're going to have had those memories and you're going to have had those successes. You're going to be remembered for what you were, which was a stud and a legend. Probably a little bit better spot. But emotionally, it's just as hard. And I do, if we are to take him at his word in these reports to be true, I do fear that we're just kicking the can. Is this a situation where he calls up Dan and goes, listen, could I have one more fight? That's going to be roughly four months away. That's going to give me time to train. That's going to give me time to prepare. But that's also going to allow me to get my exit strategy together. Because what am I going to do with my time is a very, very real thing. And many of us will never get to experience it. Many of us will, will, will always have to get up and go do something as a, as a means to an end. It's very normal. But what do I do with my time when I don't have to do something? is a very legitimate problem that generally leads to bad things. I will tell you guys, on a very personal level, I will tell you something. I went and, and spoke at a prison not that long ago. May, I went and, went and spoke at a prison. And I didn't want to go, got asked to go. I didn't want to go. I was looking down my nose already. Go speak to a bunch of hoodlums. This, this, you would be stunned. Do you want to know what I found? And I was there for about 90 minutes. Do you want to know what I found? This will stun you. I found a whole bunch of very, very nice young men who made one bad decision. And as we sat and talked, and the thing was designed for me to come in and talk, and I did do a talk, but then I, but then I sat and listened, and it became a visiting process. And just in that 90 minutes I was there, you, you would be stunned at the similarities. First off, it was somebody that had some free time. Males, 18 to 25, very common. The bad decisions always happened either on a Friday or a Saturday, and they was always happened after midnight. I mean, you could start to isolate these things and really break it down. Males, 
18 to 25, Friday and Saturday night, midnight to 2 a.m. And all these different things happened in all their different lives, and they went and they made a bad decision. The reason I bring that up is just free time is a very real and very troubling thing. And anytime you you live a very specific life that's really goal oriented and it's really driven, and you can measure your successes very clearly, right? I mean, that's what the competition is. You walk, you're going to measure your success. That level of dedication is honorable, but it does come with a fear of not having an exit strategy where you can transition out of that and understanding this isn't who I am, but this is something that I, I did. And I went all in and I made my best commitment, but now I got to transfer and go do something else. And it's not just one time you're going to have to go through this in life, guys. You must evolve constantly. I mean, ask yourself, look, if you're doing the same thing right now today that you were doing five years ago, you, you, you're probably not evolving and growing. That's just a true reality. Things have to be able to change. You've got to be able to let go. I tell you guys this whole thing to tell you guys this. I was so committed to my sport. I'm going to personalize. I'm going to make, make put myself in here. But it was a very humorous story. So I did this with Clayton Hires. I, every single day, I'm with Clayton Hires. And he was a military man. He's a fantastic, but you are going to work hard the end. You are going to eat right. You are going to be disciplined. You're going to be in bed at these hours, and you're going to be awake at these. I mean, it's it was very structured. And this was my life. This was my commitment. This is what I did. Do you want to know how he retired me? You guys would probably think that this would be, okay, hey, Champlet, we got to sit down. We got to talk. Here's what happened. Here's the high points. Here's some of the low points. Here's what I'm seeing now. Here's what I think. What do you think? Let's sleep on it. Let's talk about this in the coming week. You would think that'd be a long, drawn-out process. So something along the lines that I just laid out. He retired me from something that I had done for 33 years by looking at me and saying, well done, champ. I said, I said, what? He said, well done, champ. No more fighting. And I said, I said, huh? well, what do you think of this? And I threw a couple of suggestions at him. He said, no, nope. no, nah, not going to do that anymore. All done. You got a little one now. You got to spend time with your little one. All done. Hey, you want to get some dinner? I said, yeah. And next thing I knew, we were having some pizza. That was it. We, we have never to this day spoke about it. More in depth, never revisited, never went back. He looked at me and said, we all done, champ. <laughs> and I said, I said, what? He said, ah, we all done fight. <laughs> it's a very funny story to me, but not for nothing. Okay. And don't think coach Clayton hadn't had to think about this talk many times. We've been together a long time. Not the first guy that he had to tell. I'm not going to do this anymore. He just grabbed that bandaid and ripped it off. It was as simple as that. And I would encourage guys to, to have a little bit of an exit strategy. And I know that some coaches just want you all in. I used to live at the Olympic Training Center. There was a big belief out there that nobody should have a job. Nobody should volunteer. Nobody, you just practice. And at the Olympic Training Center, you sleep there. They have a housing situation. They have food there. That's, that's where you would eat. And you train. And you just make this cycle. And you do it day after day, into weeks, into months. And they turn into years. And you... You know, try to go get your medal and represent the country well. But one thing that frustrated me, and, and the belief was, and I heard a number of coaches say this, they go, you have your whole life to work. You can work your whole life. You have a very small amount of time to do this, and you need to be completely in. I love the philosophy. I really don't shy away from that philosophy. It was just very tough because practice in the morning was 60 minutes. Practice in the afternoon was 90 minutes. Well, there's no drive time. It's right there. There's no drive time back there. Well, all of a sudden you're eating up four and five and six hours a day and, and, and lying to yourself that this is a full-time job. This is two hours and 30 minutes. There's 24 hours in a day. You have to do something. You have to do something. You're going to sit in the corner. Do you want to go get a job? Something you can put on a resume, learn some skill. I mean, what do you want to do with that? I would just encourage that people are always thinking about that and, you know, just Enjoy the time. Be fully committed. You never have to miss a practice. But you can do more than one thing at a time. 
And that also just makes it a, a little bit easier for when that transition does come because it appears to be a very, very tough spot. I mean, even our he Sugar Ray Leonard, probably my all-time favorite athlete, definitely my favorite boxer, but possibly my all-time favorite athlete. He came out and talked about it. I mean, he, he got into cocaine. He was trying to kill himself. He just didn't know what to do. I mean, it was as simple as he just didn't know what to do with his time. He used to know. He used to have goals and be driven. He used to walk into arenas and get this rush. It all went away. He did his best to, he could as, to fill that void and started doing coke. Now, I'm not speaking out of school. I appreciated that he was so candid and came out because it was a warning. It was a warning to other people. Just know that when the end comes, it's going to be tough and you're not really going to know what to do with yourself. That's okay. There's a lot of truth to the expression. You can be sad something's over or you can be grateful that it happened. And it's tough. It's easy to say. It's a tough one. But when I am watching some of our heroes dismantling their own legacies, it's tough. And I want to have the word. I want to be helpful, guys. I want to have the words and help to boost somebody up. But it's tough. I can only offer you examples. You know, a fine, you, want, you want to know the right path to go down? I'll give you a great example would be Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping as a competitor was as ruthless, as mean, as driven as they come. And when he decided he wasn't going to go compete anymore, he got up the next day at the same time, put his shoes on, and got his workout in. Gets done with that. He likes to do the dumbbells. He likes to hit them. He kept doing the same stuff. He stayed involved that way. He essentially weaned himself off of it. If this fame and this competitive spirit, if it really is a drug and it really is a high and it really is a rush, well, maybe we need to treat it the same way as any other substance, if you will. Tough comparison, but I think one that you guys would understand. I think it's one that is relatable. And maybe we got to wean off it. I watched Bisping wean himself off the competitive side of the sport and right into his next chapter. I watched him do, and I thought, Mike, I wish you'd come out and talk to people. I wish you'd tell people how you, you go meet Michael Bisping. He's as happy as he's ever been. Doing a lot of the same stuff as he used to do, just not quite with the same intensity. It's a great example, but it is somebody that found a way to transition slowly. Might be a good idea. Might be one that coaches should start thinking about and athletes should start uh, digesting themselves.